hill far away stood an old ragged cross the emblem of suffering and shame and a love that will grows where the dear rest and best for a while the lost sinners was slain so i cherish the hora get cross to my truth is at last i lay down i will cling to the hora get cross and extend it someday for a crown get cruise so despised by the world as a hundreds of truck shoot for me for the dear lamb of god left his glory above to bury to the calvary so i cherish the hora get cross tell my truth is at last i lay down i will cling to the hora get cross and extend it someday for a crown to the true ragged cross i will have to be true it shall man reproach gladly bear then you call me some day to my home far away Bethel's glory forever I'll share So I cherish the whole I get cross Till my trophy is at last I lay down I will cling to the whole I get cross I can go to sleep 
When the gloomy shadows round about me creep, knowing I shall wake and never more to roam. Anywhere with Jesus I behold sweet home. Anywhere, anywhere, fear cannot know. Anywhere with Jesus I can safely Popote, popote, sina mashaka. Popote, na yesu na beza kwenda. Okay, we can be singing song 495. Let's go. There is a place of quiet rest near to the heart of God, a place where sin cannot molest near to the heart of God. Oh, Jesus, bless. the heart of gold all dust for wet before thee near to the heart of gold there is a place of comfort sweet near to the heart of gold the heart of God. Oh, Jesus, bless Redeemer, sent from the heart of God. All dust who went before thee, near to the heart of item uh, it's going to be a soily choice uh, from this row forty six okay Swahili song forty six our uh, last choice Me Puni Pake Yesu Mane Noya Ketamu Pahali Pali Pohe Rim Niwe Poki Lasiku Upendor, na his 
Sani Vyake Kwangu Vime Nivu Tamoyo Miguru Ni Pake Yesu Apapali Bora Kathambiza ngu Pahali papunziko Miguhuni Miguhuni pake Yesu Apa nafanya salama Kwa kena pewa uwe Jana nehema Ole bariki mokozi Ni migu ni pako Uni tazame kwa pendo Ni one uso wako Okay, allow me pray as we get this announcement. Let us pray. Our loving Lord, this moment we come before you. Thank you, Jesus, for guiding us through this week. Even in these midweek prayers and devotions, we pray that you may guide us. Be with us through this day and this session. In Jesus' name I pray. A good evening, church. Happy Wednesday. Just a wave if you can see me right here. Musa. Tafadali. <laughs> okay. Thank you. So, I want to welcome you uh, into the session today. We're doing day three of the spiritual week of emphasis. We have been here from Monday. I want to see by the show vans those who have been here from Monday. Please. If you are confident enough. Ladies, ladies, I have only seen men. Ladies, this is Darlene. You can greet us, please. Stand and greet us. All the time, the Lord is good. Where you can greet us too. Jacob Were. Okay, the man just seated to the right of Tom Ocheng. You can remind me your name if I am losing your name. Wellington, sorry. I don't know who was where. Okay, where if you are yes, you can greet us first. Smile, Jesus loves you too. Okay, where is where? I uh, I must have captured that name. Jacob Were. Is he around? Not really. Okay, from this side. I will request Bruce to greet us. Happy Thursday. Happy Wednesday. A lady, a volunteering lady to greet us too. Volunteer. Naomi. We had Naomi on Monday. Please, if you seated around this place, you can greet us. Okay, there is, it seems no ladies are volunteering. 
any visitor, non J Kuzda member uh, or non Adventist member who has joined us today? Yes? Any? It is fine. Thank you. So I have the following announcements to, uh, to make. That is, first, we have been having a week of spiritual emphasis uh, facilitated by our pastor, uh, Pastor Kiogora. So we are all welcome. Tomorrow, the day after tomorrow, we will still be here. This is a week of spiritual emphasis, and tomorrow, at the same hour, 7 to 8, we will be having these sessions facilitated by uh, our pastor. Uh, another announcement is that uh, we have been making this announcement and we have been saying that uh, Jay Kuzda is planning to have a magazine. And so some articles are coming and we hope that they will be coming until, I, I don't know when was the, it was supposed to be March. That is the deadline for submitting these articles. And so we are also requesting that those who, uh, vo who can volunteer to edit uh, this stuff can also see Sydney Nachiro and also, also Dorcas, Bukachi, or Jimmy. Those are the committee members to the publishing department of this church. Another announcement is that on 23rd, 23rd is next week, Wednesday, we're going to have a, a book review. We are almost, uh, we, are, we were in a journey of reviewing this book, The Steps to Christ, and we will be doing a review of two chapters, and that is chapter, is it six? Yes, we have the faith and acceptance, and then a test of discipleship and growing up into Christ. And so that is the end of our announcements today. And may you have a blessed devotion and Vespers. May God bless you. Psalms 91, verse 3. Psalms 91, 3 says, Surely he, he shall, surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the polar, and from the noisome pestilence. Amen. With the help of our choristers, we will sing Psalm 516.
acerca At Nude. Look, observe carefully verse 6 and 7. It talks about the terror of the night. It talks about the arrow that flies by day. It talks about the pestilence that walks in darkness. It also talks about the destruction that lays waste at Nude. And this is all military language. Verse 7 says, A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand. But it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. I said it is a wilderness also. It's, a, it's in a wilderness setting. And look carefully at what is mentioned here in verse 9. It says, because you have made the Lord who is my refuge, even the most high your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways in their hands they shall bear you up lest you dash your foot against a stone notice the word stone that is still wilderness verse 13 says you shall tread upon the lion that's wilderness again and the cobra wilderness language the young lion and the serpent you shall trample under underfoot that is still language which is borrowed from the wilderness Verse 14 says, Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. These are promises to the overcomer. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. So we are transported by the language and the figures and the symbols within that chapter to a wilderness setting. And that is why so many biblical scholars believe this is one of the Psalms that was written by Brother Moses. Because in it, he also mentions the tabernacle, the tent of the meeting. That is why even the language is asking, who will dwell in the most high secret place? Who will dwell there? It is and 
we believe that it is uh, from a setting of uh, the most holy. You remember the hardly tent, uh, the, the, the tabernacle, how it was divided, the holy and the most holy. So the question is, who shall enter the most holy place? Who shall have or who shall pitch his tent next to God? Who shall dwell in the presence of God? And that is the question that the psalmist is trying to answer. Ultimately, that is the question. I mean, all these promises that are given there, yes, they are true. But it all boils down to one point. That what kind of a person is going to dwell in the most high, uh, in the secret place of the most high. And so he says, he who dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. Now, if you are keen enough, you'll observe uh, during that time when they were in the wilderness, yes, they were moving in tents and the like, and it has always been the desire of God to make his dwelling with his people. Even when you read the book of Genesis, the Bible says, after Adam and Eve were chased from the Garden of Eden, the Lord sent his angel whose sword moved uh, moved around the, 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 the garden. But if you look carefully, the very heart of the angel dwelling in the garden, the name that they use there is Shakan. Shakan is, a, is, a, is an Hebrew word meaning to dwell. And when you hear Shekinah glory or Shekinah glory, it talks about God's, God's presence descending in the form of a cloud, Shakaning or dwelling with his people. And I'm, I'm telling you, it's the theme of the Bible, that God will never rest until he has shaken with us. For we read in the book of Revelation, behold and see that the dwelling of men, of God is with what? With men. And until those words are fulfilled, God is still in the business of winning people and preparing them for his dwelling. And that is why he said in my father's house, are many what? Mansions, dwellings, Dwelling place, shakan, a place to shakan. That's where Jesus went to prepare us. And so here he says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. You ask me, how is that even possible? The wilderness is a very hostile place. Can someone still dwell? Can someone still be faithful uh, to God even in a wilderness setting? And uh, the answer is still yes. Because the blessing is only proclaimed to the one who will say, Surely he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. That is to the, the best place to be. That is the most, or the, the best place to be is in the presence of God. That is the greatest place that you can ever have, uh, uh, go or can ever dwell. And the idea is this, that whether it is night or day, you are ever, you, or you ever live with an ever consciousness that God is around, uh, God's presence is around you. God is seeing you. God is with you. Whether you are in the hostel, whether you are walking on this street, you live with an ever present consciousness that God is with you. That is what it means to dwell in the most, or in the secret place of the Most High. Verse 2 says, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him I will trust. He talks about trust. I will say to the Lord, sometimes we need to declare with our mouths that, that uh, something deep within us is happening. There is something unique that comes with um, uh, I mean, a mouth confirmation or affirmation of our faith. So the psalmist, after beholding the beauty and the goodness of the Lord naturally responds and say, I will say, meaning it is an affirmation that he is making that he has no other God except him. He has no other place to run to because he says, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. Now, a refuge in the Old Testament was, a, I mean, you remember even Moses, Moses said cities of refuge. So the idea of people running for refuge is in the Bible. And even you remember, even after 
after the battle between David and Goliath, you remember what happened. The Philistines even ran away. And when they were, ran away, they hid themselves. They took refuge in a certain city. And then the walls fell on them. That is how it happens. So uh, this idea, in the for the primary audience, because we are the secondary audience, for the primary audience to whom the psalmist was writing, they could relate with the refuge, the idea of a refuge. And also the Bible says, you are my fortress. That's what he says. He is my refuge and my fortress. Now for us, we don't understand fortresses and their importance because we are living in a very secure environment. But in the olden days, all the cities, they invested heavily on their fortresses, on their walls. They invested so much on their walls. And some of the best walls were the Babylonian walls because we are told even uh, the chariots could ride, two chariots uh, pulled by, 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 by an horse, they could ride on a top of the, of, the, of the wall. And so within the walls, they had also had fortresses. And what was the purpose of the fortress? One, it was security. And secondly, it was also an advantageous position where they could see enemy troops before the enemy troops could enter the city. And so for the people of God, he says, surely, uh, he say, he say, he, for, for, the, for the psalmist, he says, and he is my refuge and my fortress. It means God is my security. Other people may run to the kings, may run to all kinds of people. But for those who believe in God, we have a fortress. We have a refuge. So I don't know what happens to you, what you do when you are faced with an insurmountable challenge. Where do you run to? You see, some of us, when we are uh, faced up with a challenge that is beyond ourselves, we, only, you, we always run to people and we share with them our deepest fears, our deepest secrets. We share with them uh, whatever secrets that we have with the hopes that by them listening to us, at least it's going to give us a relief or maybe they are going to sympathize with us or empathize with us. But unfortunately... People run away the very moment they know your life is complicated. Because human nature does not want to associate with complication. Human nature wants to associate with success. And the moment you open your mouth to tell your friends, and I'm not saying that you should not go for counseling session, that's a totally different thing. Because those who do, do counseling, they have sworn in, uh, they, 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 they have sown in that they are not going to divulge anything. Um, confidentiality is a thing for them. So, but uh, for your friend, you go and tell your friend, and the next day you know your story is all over campus. I don't know where you run to. But for the psalmist, when he was in fear, because even the language itself tells you that this man was under pressure. The one who wrote this word, Words was under pressure. He was in the wilderness with cobras, with lions, with arrows flying by day. And at night there's no peace, there's pestilence. That is a plague or, 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 or what do you call them? Communicable diseases are incommunicable diseases. They spread very fast at night. That is why it's even one. I think the scientists who are in the house should answer. Why is it that? Uh, People get sick so much at night. You may be, I mean, you may be very vibrant in the morning and even in the evening. But the moment the night comes in, that's when you see even little children getting sick. And I remember one of my favorite preachers by the name C.D. Brooks once said the reason, a scientist told him that the reason why there is such a thing, it's because of the change in pressure. So the question is, let me go back to the question. Where do you run to when you are faced with problems? When you are faced with challenges, whom do you run to? For the psalmist, even in the midst of all the hostilities of the wilderness, the wars and the diseases and whatever, the demons, remember I told you it's also a psalm for demons. They were, we, we, we are living in the 21st, 21st century and some of us are in denial that they are demons. I tell you from a point of a pastor, I've seen some of them. I've gone to some places 
and I have been, I have been shocked that people live with those things. Yeah? We went to some place, I don't want to mention where, and the members, we were going for three, three weeks crusade. And we were, the, the church members rented to us a house, a flat. And we lived there for the entire three weeks. But for the first week, we were disturbed. We would always hear some movement. We would hear on atop the house, we would hear the, some movement like if it's, as if someone is stepping or someone is walking on top of the house. And then when we open the door and dash outside to look at who is walking, we could not see anyone. I was with Pastor Meshach Mogo and I was shocked. When we went to sleep, then there was a knock, a big knock on the door. The moment we moved from the house, there's another knock. And the compound was a secured compound. It was locked and we were not the only one who were there. So many people were there. And we were disturbed for almost a week. We rarely had enough sleep. We were wondering who was playing some jokes on us. Until, some, until we opened up to one of the tailors who was uh, using one of the front doors. And he told us, no, you don't, you don't need to worry about those things. The owner of the house, the, 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 the landlord, has protected his property. That's what he told us. And so after the three weeks of uh, preaching, the landlord is like he was listening to us from, a far, from far away. And so as we were leaving, he sent a message that we should go to his, uh, to his home and pray with him. And of course, he, he had some mangoes prepared for us. Let me tell you, I did not have enough faith to go and uh, enjoy the mangoes. <laughs> yeah, I feared uh, maybe I, would, I could carry not only the mangoes, but the ghost. Eh? <laughs> so I don't know. But uh, there's, an, uh, there's a book that has been written by uh, Adventist University of Africa. Pastors sharing, pastors sharing their experiences across the continent. It's called Africa's G, the Spiritism in Africa. Spiritism in Africa. You can write it down. It's a, it's a, you go to Adventist Book Center, you can get that book. It's called Spiritism in Africa. Because we live in denial. Some of you don't know that language where it came from. Because in African tradition, uh, beliefs, and even witchcraft, we believe that um, there are what work on a machombaya. Kiangalia mtoto hivi, the child would die or some other thing would happen to the child. That is why I'm against this idea of what you call baby showers. I'm not so progressive in that you forgive me. Are we together? Are we together? You call people for baby shower and some people come with ill motives. We have had so many stories of people. I'm talking as a pastor. We've had so many stories of people losing their babies because of this nonsense called what? Baby shower. It's so serious even when you do your wedding. And I'm telling you not only from experience, even before I experienced my wedding, I knew this. That there are some people who come with some ill motive. Even those baasha unapewa. Some of them are not meant for good. And you need before you get excited to, and hope and help those you need to kneel down and pray. Fast and pray. Because not everyone is for you. Back to the Bible. These things are there. Some of you have shared with me a pastor, and I know that some are struggling with demonic possession, even among ourselves. So, let's go back to Psalms 191, and we are going to read verse um, uh, three. Say, verse 2 says, again, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. Brothers and sisters, my message is simple. Run to the Lord. Before you open up to your fellow man, Run to the Lord. Run to the Lord. That is the message of some. There is nothing that God cannot handle. He is a sure fortress. He 
is a sure refuge. refuge. And that is why he says, my God, in him I will trust. I don't know on whom do you place your trust. Verse 3 says, which is our core message now, it says, surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. Once I'm done with explaining those two things, I'll be, uh, be finished. Surely, that's why you say, he will deliver you. That was that is the message. If you are struggling with uh, some uh, maybe some secret sin, some secret lifestyle, uh, maybe you are addicted to something. I want to tell you the message tonight is this: God is able to deliver you. Praise the Lord. The Lord is ready and even more than able to deliver you. And for the psalmist who was not living in our day, who did not have COVID and the like, he said, he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler. Who, was, who is a fowler? A fowler is someone who traps or, or puts up traps to catch the birds. Are we together? Are we together? Yes. And in the Old Testament, sometimes they used a net. Sometimes they used the traditional African thing of uh, kikapu. And what is the greatest asset of a fowler? The greatest asset of a fowler is the, the, the surprise element. His target, the prey that he is targeting, does not know it is being targeted. That's a fact. If it knew, it would fly away. But for the fowler, he has to conceal himself so much so that he is not seen. Whether he is hunting with using his arrow, he has to hide. Because there is that element of surprise. Hang on there because I'm coming back to that. There is this other thing that says, that this other part uh, that says, he is uh, he's going to do what? To deliver you from the perilous pestilence. Now that's where studying Hebrew comes into place. This is the reason you take pastors to theology school. That word translated pestilence has so many or has various translations. If you look, if you don't need a degree to look at, at these things, if you look at strong concordance, and look at the word that is translated here as a, it is translated as pestilence. You will know that it has a connotation of uh, words, those words people say, cursing words on the like, uh, not, well, not so well meaning words, words that are, uh, are um, I mean, words that are hurted with the view of hurting someone. It has also the connotation of a disease. Like COVID, that is transmitted uh, from one person to another, it also has so uh, some connotation. And now this is very interesting. It has some connotation of evil spirits, and that is why I think it is again repeated again in verse six. It says, "Nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness." If it was a normal disease, it would not be walking. Are you with me? Are you following me? We don't talk, and even during that time, however poetic they could be, they could not talk about the walking pestilences. It had to do with the demons that walk, that rule the night. And that is why in ancient times, men did not go to war at night. Why? They feared the presence of spirits and demons. Even here in Africa, the people did not go to war at night. They went to war during the day. And so the psalmist, he says, I will surely, he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler. Now, the stillness of the fowler, the secretiveness of the fowler, all indicate from a spiritual perspective that the fowler, the real fowler, is the devil. With, his all, with all his devices that are uh, 
that, 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 are, uh, that he sets on our way to ensnare us, that are calculated to make us fall. And just like I said, the prey or the target has no knowledge that he is a target. The devil is a master fowler. He knows no age. He is no respect of person also in the sense of uh, he targets everyone. He will target the pastor. He will target an elder. He will target a deacon. He will target everyone. He is a master fowler. And his secret weapon is the surprise element again. He takes us by surprise. That's the devil for you. And brother, the fallen man, the fallen nature in us, that brother Paul says that in him there is another law because he no longer is able in his own strength as a man to do that which is good. That which he knows that is right, he doesn't do it. So what does he do? He does opposite of his own convictions. That which is bad, that is what he does. He is a man in, who is under siege. And like Barry C. Black would say, he's like a man being drawn up uh, by, by two horses on chariots on opposite direction, being pulled over. There's a force that wants you to follow the will of God. And there's another force that is dragging you behind. The fallen nature, brothers and sisters, is not strong. We cannot face the fowler. We cannot outdo him. The one who is targeting us in verse 3. The one who the Bible says is a fowler. The who lays snare. Laying a snare is something that you don't see. It strikes you at an unexpected time. That is why the Bible says who thinks he is standing. He should be very careful. Because he can easily fall. Are you with me? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm just saying this. For us to be able to defeat and overcome the fowler. And for us to be able to say the Lord is my refuge and my fortress. For us to be delivered by God. I mean uh, the, the message is just simple. That in these spiritual battles only the Lord can deliver us. It takes the power of God to deliver us. And to change us to love the things which are spiritual. It takes the power of God to help us overcome the evil one. That is why I don't believe this nonsense of this song. At the, uh, brother. Hello? Or oh, sister? That guy was in heaven. One angel was able to, to cause an earthquake when Jesus died and to open the tomb. One angel. You read your Bible. One angel descended in Egypt and he murdered all the firstborns. The devil was not your usual angel. He was an archangel. Do you even stand a chance to put it in are you with me? At least when you say, Yeshetani akimona yesu, ana tete meka, it would make sense. Are you with me? I'm just trying to communicate this. We are hopeless without God. We are hopeless before the devil without God. And so all these habits you are trying to overcome, there's only one key that can unlock your freedom. The Bible says, He shall deliver you. Turn to your neighbor and say, God shall deliver you. And the last one, I have already talked about the perilous pestilence. It's not your usual pestilence. Paul says in Ephesians chapter 6, For a battle is not against who? Hello, flesh and what? 
blood, but evil spirit in high places. If you don't know there, that, that's the reality. There is a spiritual battle going on. Ellen G. White was ahead of her time when we were studying theology. We wondered how a grade 3 uh, student could come up with a concept that we have never heard anywhere. It is not found in any other books anywhere. The theme of the great controversy. That behind the, what we see, the battles that we see with our physical high eyes, there is another battle that is waging. There is another battle that is also ranging. A spiritual one. We wrestle against the powers of darkness. And that is what the psalmist was saying. When it comes to wrestling with those powers of darkness, we are hopeless. But thank God, within a message that is so full of admonition and warning and fear, fear, there's fear element in, in that message. There's also a message of hope. God will deliver you. He has always been delivering. He is delivering present, continuous tense. Meaning he is delivering today and tomorrow. And when he will appear again, the, the Bible says, he will deliver us. And until then, in between here, we have to let the Lord win the battles for us. I don't know what you're struggling with. I don't know how much, how many days you've been struggling with whatever habit you have. I really don't have the knowledge, but I know of a God who can deliver. And I want to invite you to stand with me and pray with me. If you know in your heart there's something that you've really been struggling to overcome, I want you to lay your heart bare to God. I did not ask you to come forward. I want you to stand up and pray with me if you want victory in your life. And I'm done. I'm not going to plead with you, Father. praying about your spiritual well-being. You could be having some other item, items in your heart about life, struggles in the campus and the like. Those things, even Jesus said, we will love them until he comes. But now, right now, we want a connection with the Father. We want to recommit ourselves to God and ask him to win the battles in our lives spiritual battles. If you are someone who has been struggling even with prayer, you also need to open your heart to God and say, Lord, I've been lazy on this. Help me. Give me a new start so that I may be more prayerful. If you've been struggling with the lateness at church, pray for that. If you've been struggling with all kinds of things, including you know, will rarely read the word of God in between the week, it's time to commit yourself. It's not too late. God is ready because he has said he will deliver. He will deliver you. That is his promise. That is his promise. Let us pray. Father, we thank you because of Jesus Christ. Thank you for reminding our position as sinners who are destitute who are carnal, who are lost in their sinfulness. But above all, thank you for reminding us there is a way out. There is deliverance. You will deliver us, as your words are said. Father, we once again...
pray for that deliverance. For all those who are struggling with you, whatever addictions, habits, and lifestyle, for those who have forgotten you as our first love, Father, we pray that you may give us a new beginning. And Lord, we pray that you may answer us beyond our wildest expectations because you've said in your word that we should seek first your kingdom. Seeking connection with you is seeking your kingdom. And your word has said the other things will be added unto us. And so, Father, because we have faith that those other things will be added to us, those things that we've been struggling with, those things we think that you do not know, Father, we express our faith right now that, Lord, you are able to provide. So remember us also as we grow to, uh, more spiritually to know you and to love you more than anything else. Help us also to excel in our studies and in our other areas of life. Thank you for blessing this congregation. Thank you because, Lord, we are leaving this place with a blessing. And bring us tomorrow to hear your word. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. Uh, I hope you can connect the, the man at, uh, with the, the gentleman with the... Are you able to connect with the, to the internet? Um, those who are leading the worship, can you come forward for the next few minutes? Uh, it's already 2018. 20 hours and 18 minutes. You can, you can sing. You can celebrate the word for the next 12 minutes. So the chorus has come forward as I do this.